after the long nervous system lab, we get a little bit of break and we get to talk about the general and special senses, which to me is one of the more interesting labs. We're going to focus primarily on special senses, but there is a little bit on the general senses. And that is exercise number one. There are a couple of experiments you need to do on your own. You need to find somebody to help you, though. You're going to be looking at how accurate and precise the touch sensation is on different parts of your body. So I do want you to do this. I do want to see your experimental results filled in here when you turn this in. And then you have a couple of questions to answer about the general senses. Well, what we need to talk about are the two diagrams, which are the eye and the ear. The first one is the eye. And so there's a lot going on here. We're going to kind of start on the outside and work our way in. In the most obvious place or the most natural place to start on the outside, actually in the back. And so the eyeball has three layers to it. The outermost layer, which is the white of your eyeball, labeled here, is the sclera. Under that, which is kind of a pinkish color in this diagram, labeled here, is the choroid. And under that, which is yellow here, is the retina. And the retina is the actual sensing part of your eye. And if we follow it back, Notice that it actually turns into this little structure that disappears off the right hand of the diagram. This is the optic nerve. The retina and the optic nerve are the same thing. They just are in a slightly different place and look slightly different, but they are one continuous structure. In the retina, you see this little depression here. This is the fovea centralis. When you look at something, the center of your vision is in this little spot. This is where the most, the, the most dense area of light receptors is. So when you're looking at something, that's why when you, you need a clear picture of it, you're going to look directly at it. If you use peripheral vision, you're not going to see it as well. Now we're going to jump back up to the front. So obviously we can't have a white sclera in the front of our eye because the light needs to get through. So in the very, very front, we have a clear cornea. Behind the cornea, we have the anterior chamber. It's the anterior chamber because it is anterior to the iris, which is this structure here. Behind the iris, but in front of the lens here, is the posterior chamber running through the center of your pupil, remember the pupil is the colored part of your eye, running through the center of the iris is the pupil, which is where the light enters your eye. The pupil can get larger or smaller, and that can control how much light is getting into the eye. So the light goes through the pupil and into the lens. The lens, lens is a fluid-filled kind of sac that as we change its shape, we change the focus of the light. So connected to the lens here on the top and the bottom is the ciliary body. And this is essentially a muscle that can pull on that lens to change the focus. So that would be considered in, in, an intrinsic eye muscle inside, but we also have extrinsic eye muscles outside the eye that help move the eye itself, pointing in different direction. So that would be this here. Back behind the lens we have the largest part of our eye and this is the vitreous body. So I'm just making sure that I covered everything. It looks like it. So we can move on from the eye to the ear. But for that, there's some questions for you to answer. If somehow, some way, you have an extra eyeball laying around home and you want to dissect that, be my guest. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen. So my suggestion is go online, find a picture of a sheep eye dissection. That's the kind of eye that you would just dissect if you took this in person. Find that. What you'll see is it doesn't look anything at all like that. Okay. 
it's everything looks very similar. It's hard to pick one part out from another, but you will in fact see almost all of these structures. Then there's the ear. In the ear, we're going to break down into three main parts: the outer ear, middle ear, and inner ear. The outer ear is the eardrum and out. And so this cursor here. Here we go. Number four is the eardrum. So that and everything out is the outer ear. So that includes number twelve, the auditory canal. Which is this area where the sound is actually going to come into your head. And then the actual part of the ear that sticks up out off of your head, which is the pinna. So that's the outer ear. There's not much going on out here. Once you get past the eardrum, we get into the middle ear. And so the middle ear's main function is to transfer vibrations from the outer ear to the inner ear. And that's where these little bones are going to come in. These are the auditory ossicles, but each one has its own specific name. Number three, the one that attaches to the eardrum, kind of looks like a triceratops here, is the malleus. Connected to the malleus is number two, the incus. And then after the incus is the stapes. The stapes is this little two-pronged fork-looking piece here, and that is going to transfer the vibrations from the middle ear to the inner ear. Also in the middle ear, we have this area here where the, the ossicles are, are located, which is the tympanic cavity. And then the tympanic cavity drains down this way. This is the eustachian tube. This actually drains down into your throat. And so your middle ear and your throat are connected. Number nine is this little spot here in the middle ear. This is the round window. This is kind of a, a gateway from the middle ear to the inner ear. And then in the inner ear, this large snail spiral looking structure here is the cochlea, number seven. This is where most of the actual hearing is going to occur. Up top, number six, are the semicircular canals. This is where the equilibrium and movement and g-forces are going to be sensed. Number eight is the cranial nerve. Now notice, part of that cranial nerve comes down here to the cochlea, where the hearing occurs, and part of it comes up here to the semicircular canals, where equilibrium is sensed. And so it's a shared nerve here. Uh, I think that's everything. Yep. So, just some questions on the ear for you to fill out. And then you get down to kind of eye test and ear test. The eye test, I want you to do this. Okay, this is easy enough. Go online, search for Snell and Eye Chart and a stigmatism chart. Pull it up on your computer screen and do the experiment here. This is going to tell you how good your eyesight is. So you're going to test right eye and left eye separate using the Snellen eye chart. And then you can do the stigmatism test with right eye and left eye separate. Part C here is testing your hearing. And unless you happen to have tuning forks lying around, you're not going to be able to do this. So I do want to see your results here. I do not need to see this part filled out. If you're able to do it, great. I suggest you do it. But you're not going to be held to part C here. Part 5, we have no diagrams. Okay. It's, but this is looking at the nose and the tongue. So the tongue, I think, if you saw a picture of it on a lab exam, I think you could pick out a picture of a tongue if I showed you a picture of a tongue. The papilla are the bumps on the tongue. The bumps on the tongue are not taste buds. Taste buds are microscopic. Taste buds are on the papilla. All you need to be, be able to do is be prepared to tell me, yes, that's a tongue, 
and the bumps on the tongue are papilla. For the nose, you need to know that the cranial nerve connected to the nasal cavity is cranial nerve 1. You need to know that the big open area behind your nose is the nasal cavity. That's it. Don't worry about olfactory bulb, olfactory tract, or olfactory epithelium. If you were in the lab, in person, we had the model, you would have to know those. But I guess this is your lucky day because they didn't include a diagram. You are not going to be held to that standard. So you don't need to know those three. And that is the end of this lab. If you have questions, let me know. If you have trouble finding any of the, the uh, Snell and I chart or the eye charts or doing any of the experiments, let me know. I'd be happy to help.